Hi, and welcome to another video in the R H C S A video series. So we've had uh, a couple of requested videos. Um, so the one of them is the uh, to go through auto FS within um, the NTF uh, NFS uh, section. So uh, auto FS means it will auto mount uh, files or directory uh, directories based on um, use. So the common use cases for this would be um, users um, home directories. So uh, what I'll do today is run through exactly how to to enable AutoFS and all the configuration that's required on both the NFS server, which we, we previously built in the um, in previous video. So I'll, I'll link to that in the, in the description below, but this will be the follow up from that. So we can actually enable auto um, mounting on the user's home directories and we'll get that working. So yeah, follow the description below, uh, link in the description below for um, the previous video to set up the NFS server. And then now once you've got that set up, you can then follow this to um, actually do the auto FS addition. So let's do a pseudo bash, pretty standard. Okay. So now we're in as root, let's do a system CTL status and then do NFS hyphen server. Yep, and we can see the server's currently active in that nice green there. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. Next thing is to check, um, are we exporting the user's home directories? And I don't think we configured that in the previous video, so that'll be something we have to configure now. So that's um, the etc. exports directory, so vi etc. exports or nano, whatever you use. Uh, so we've got currently the NFS share, and we can see um, that's currently shared to 10.0.2.6, which is actually our client's uh, server. So we can pretty much just copy this file with double Y to do a yank, and then just do a P to do a paste. And what we'll do is just modify this slightly. So we we'll just remove all of that. We can leave that and we can leave that as well. So that's pretty much ready to go. Uh, and we just do a right quit. And, and then to save, for it to actually apply on the NFS server, we can do a system CTL restart and then NFS hyphen server. And if we just do a etc exports we can see the current exports are there cool okay let's head over to the client now and um, check a few things and get um, auto FS installed and running so so let's do sudo bash as always um, and then we're gonna have to install auto FS so DNF install auto FS and we'll just wait for that to install okay so um, auto FS is now installed so the next thing to check is actually the IDs so each user is mapped to a an ID number and this ID number um, should match on both systems so if you have user one in our case this is what the user we're going to use uh, the user one ID must be the same as the user one ID on the site server so use server and and client have to have the same user ID so in this case our user ID is one zero zero five so let's go to the server and check the same UID so I'll just quickly log into that Okay, so just do ID uh, user one. Oh, yep, yeah, ID user one. And yeah, we've got 1005, thankfully. So it looks all good uh, from that perspective. So there's nothing really we have to do in this case. So I've just switched back to uh, the client again. Um, and I'll just show you what you need to do if you do have um, the UID uh, not matching. So we'll just do user mod minus U and then give it the uh, UID you want it to be, and then the username. So user one in this case. So obviously we have it currently correct, so that looks all good. So I'll just change to one uh, six, 
1006 just for the sake of this and we can see that you know if we do an id user one it matches as we can see um, i'll just change it back to 1005 because otherwise we're going to have issues um, so so what we want to do is now um, create a for command uh, a for command will go iterate through um, a, a, a command you run and based on that you can then run an action multiple times so what we do is we actually want to do is change um, ownership or chone um, and we want to change the ownership of all files that are currently owned by your previous um, user ID with the new user ID so way, the way we achieve that is with that for command so we do for i i is just um, a variable um, so it's just a value we set so i can be v or x but we just use i people normally use i and in to say uh, iterate through and we're going to run the command find and then forward slash which is just the whole file system then hyphen user and then the current id uh, the or previous id in this case so previous id so let's do the example 1006 and then we want a semicolon to say completion of the command and then do so what action do we want to do if it actually does find results and we want to do a ch own and then we want to do it against the new user group so we want to do a ch own on the id so let's we'll do 1005 and then we need to put in the variable so that will be the actual file it's found so we do a dollar sign and then i for to match the i we start we started with semicolon and then done to say to complete the command so we run all through this um, with the find command um, to find anything that's owned by the user what id 1006 then we do the churn for ownership of 1005 against that file oh i've missed something here ah i see what i've done i've missed the back ticks so I just need to put a back tick around the command it needs to run so for i in find so it needs to know which command to run so yep that looks a bit better so we've got no file to come down the code directory that's okay to ignore because it's all in the proc and the run directories which are you know the temporary file system stuff so we can safely ignore that and let that run and complete okay so that's now completed um, so we should we can do an ls on the home user one just to make sure everything looks like it's owned oh oh yeah probably need the ls minus lhtra um, we can see everything's owned by user one so it looks like it's all correct and working uh, if you see something other than that you may have still have issues so maybe check your for command but as i mentioned that for command be very careful to run when you run that in especially a live system you could cause issues with um, permissions and stuff like that for that user so the next thing now is to um, create the AutoFS configuration. Uh, so we're going to do a vi etc. auto.master.d. So you may not already have that file, uh, that directory. If you don't, uh, if you don't, you may need to create it, and then it will be home.auto.fs. Uh, you're going to create the file. So uh, vi etc. auto dot master dot d if you don't have the directory create it within um, make dir and do that otherwise we're going to just do a vi on auto dot master d slash home dot auto fs and then we're just going to add a single line in here really um, and that will be slash home slash etc slash auto fs dot home so it's just pointing it to this other file which we're going to create shortly so then we're going to do a another vi on etc autofs.home and in there we're actually going to create our com uh, configuration so we're doing insert uh, a star to say against all minus rw for read write access obviously we want to give users read write access to the home directories we're then going to give the ip host name or dns address of the uh, nfs server so 10.02.5 in our case uh, a colon and then with the directory we actually want to share so uh, access is uh, slash home and we're going to do another slash and we're going to do an ampersand 
and this means that it will automatically fill with the actual user's home directory. So in our case, uh, it will be slash user one or whatever slash user two slash user three or uh, Bob or uh, Dale or whatever. Uh, it could be anyone. Okay, so that's pretty much the AutoFS configuration done. We just now need to enable and restart AutoFS. So just systemctl. Uh, let's do a restart of AutoFS first. And then just do a systemctl uh, enable AutoFS to make sure it does it at startup. And then finally systemctl status to see what how um, AutoFS is running. Okay, so it looks really good. So now we can just do a, a clear and let's just do a sue and then user one to log in as user one. We've logged in quite quickly, so it's a good sign that that's working because if it's not working, you won't be able to log in probably. Uh, so if we got an, if we do an ls minus lhtra, you can see some files. So let's switch over to the server and see what we can see there. Just clear the screen, and this is on the uh, NFS server again. So let's just do an uh, ls minus lhtra uh, slash home slash user one. Oops, user one. Um, and we should see okay, so we've got user one, user one ownership, so it looks all right, uh, nothing much there. So let's just touch a file, um, perhaps we'll just call it. Um, from server paths so just touch and I don't know call it from server yeah so we just touch that file from server just make sure it's appeared there okay oh <laughs> yeah I just realized yeah I should probably put it into the uh, right directory um, so we do an ls minus l we actually have the from server there at the very bottom so let's now switch back to the client and let's see can we actually see this file so let's do an ls minus lhtra and we have the from server file so that looks like pretty good that it's uh, mounting absolutely fine which is fantastic news so it looks like it's pretty straightforward so let's just do another touch from client let's be here <laughs> nice and original and we've got a from client and from server file. So let's just do, uh, uh, perhaps do a clear there and just do an ls minus lhtra. Oh, um, going to the right directory. So ls minus lhtra slash home slash user one. And we've got a from client file. Oh, there's one thing interesting there is we've got user one, but we have one zero zero one as the group. So that suggests to me that the group ownership does not look good um, between the two servers. So we may need to update um, the group ownership. So that would be something qu quite good to do. Um, let's include this in the video. So uh, it'd probably be the easiest to do it from the client, like I mentioned earlier. So we'll again flick back to the client um, and we'll just do an LS and we can see, um, yeah, all of our user group are set to 1007 which doesn't match so that certainly looks like it's not working so we can just use the same for command essentially as we did before so I'll just do a history grep4 and just do a clear again and we run that command again but what we want to change now is we want to do a group find and we want to do a ch group. I just got to make sure I get these numbers correctly here. So group 1007, I think, is the correct group. And it should be 1001, I think. So 1001 is the, yep, is the group it's set in. Um, and we want that. So yeah, it's wrong way around. Yep. So let's do group uh, 1001 and the change group to 107. So let's just do that. I can just check the ID of user user one just to make sure. Okay, so our group ID is one zero zero one, so that's the incorrect one. So we want to change that to one zero zero seven in here. Yeah, so one zero zero seven. So we just run that for command. It looks absolutely fine now, and just wait for that to run. Cool. That's a bit quicker than the other one. So 
let's uh, so now we need to do group mod minus G 1007 which is the current uh, the new group and user one so which is the group so we can update that group um, membership so we now are using 1007 as the group ID so Sue so user one we have to now look what it looks like we now all have user one user one for group and um, user so that looks really good so let's do a touch from client two just to check and then back on the um, server we just do a touch from client uh, from server two and let's just do an ls minus lhtra and then home user one so we have um, from client two we have so it looks good and let's do an ls minus lhtra we can see it's all owned by user one which looks very good um, so I think that's pretty much it um, I think we covered a bit more than um, ground than I expected to but I think it also helps uh, we can see uh, where the issues might lie in um, the deployment there so it's very important you get the uh, user ID to actually get the mapping correct and the um, Group ID obviously helps with the uh, ownership, so you may get messed up there if you don't have those all all all, all those ducks in line in that case. So um, thanks for viewing my video. Um, as always, can you click uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video? Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Um, hit the bell icon for notifications of when uh, I do release new videos. Um, as you've noticed already, I've popped on the screen the usual um, stuff. So I've got the Kofi page for any donations. If you are kind enough to uh, donate to me, that would be awesome. Um, also, I've popped my T Public page for any uh, merchandise, if that's your something you're interested in. And finally, my Discord server uh, URL information. And you can use that um, to ask more detailed questions if you can't ask on uh, YouTube itself. So you're more than welcome to check it out. Thank you.